Hi everyone, uh, we are going to discuss uh, designated routers and backup designated routers today. And this topic is related with Open Shortest Path First Routing uh, Protocol. So in that uh, video, which we discussed uh, in, uh, we discussed about this Open Shortest Path First uh, Protocol. In that video, we discussed that once two routers they reach in two-way state, we say they have accepted to be neighbors of each other. So this was the rule, or this was the principle. So for example, in this case, uh, if we say these are two routers and if they exchange these hello messages and if they agree and they become neighbor, then we say that they agree and they fulfill all the requirements of become neighbor. But sometimes what happens, we have very simple OSPF network and that is typically known as point to point like this you can see this is a point to two point network and this is known as this is the uh, OSPF network type that is point to point and here you can see the messages actually uh, travel from one point to another and from back from that point to the first point and this in this way this database exchange flows when they want to exchange this LSA or LSDD so link state advertisement or link state database. This actually flows from point to point. So this was simple scenario. But sometimes we have a OSPF network type that is broadcast. So in that case, what happens? All the routers, so we can have more than two routers and these all routers actually share a common medium like Ethernet. So in that case, what happens, the OSPF actually elects the designated router and the backup designated routers. So what happens here, they actually elect designated router and backup designated router. So when the routers are on a shared Ethernet, then they do this. Now, there will be some of the routers. For example, in this case, we have five routers. One of them will be designated and the second one will be, any one of them will be backup designated router. Then the remaining routers will be known as this name, DR others. What happens here, the job of this backup designated router is that this backup designated router will become designated router as soon as this designated router fails. So we have this single router which will act as a designated router, but this may happen that this will fail. In that case, this router will actually take place of this designated router. Whatever the whatever functions are to be performed by this, those will be performed by this backup designated router. Now, how to elect this designated router so how that protocol OSPF is going to elect these designated router. So we have rules for that. So the first rule is that, so among these all routers, the router with highest priority value will be elected as a designated router. And the by default priority for these all routers is one, one, one. So we can change it so we can change this value and we can make that router as a designated router. But in case, if the priority value of all the router is same, then the next rule is that select the router as a designated router having highest router ID. So router ID, 32-bit ID assigned to these router. So the router having highest router ID will be selected or, or sorry, elected as a designated router. And in the same way, the second highest uh, priority value of from these routers will be elected as a backup, as a backup uh, designated router. Clear? So this will be the process by which these designated and backup designated router will be elected. And then they form a structure like this for exchanging this database, for exchanging LSA. So as you can see here, this is a designated router on the top here, you can see this is designated router and these are remaining routers. 
and message exchange between this and these remaining uh, routers. Otherwise, if we didn't have this situation, then this was a responsibility for all of these five routers to exchange their LSAs to every individual router. For example, if we, if we take this router, then this is the responsibility of this router to send this LSA to this one, to this one, and to this one, and to this one. Exactly in the same way from this router, this LSA are, has to be sent from to this and this, to all of them have to send these LSAs individually to all of the remaining routers. But now in this case, what happens? Communication actually takes place between designated routers and remaining routers. And in this case, when the designated router wants to send some information to all these routers, then this designated router actually uses an IP address that is multicast IP address. You can see 224.0.5. And this IP address means to all OSPF routers. So by using this address, the packets are this will be sent to all these routers, okay? And in the same way, when these routers want to send the information to the designated routers, they also use a specific multicast IP address. And this multicast, multicast IP address means to all designated router and to backup designated router as well because the backup designated router should also have this complete information because if in any case at certain point this router fails, then this backup designated router has to take the role of designated router. So they will also send this to this as well. So this is how the database actually is exchanged between designated routers and the rest of the routers in OSPF routing protocol. Now these designated and backup designated routers actually reach full state. So if you remember full state means two, two routers are in full state means they both have the complete link state database with them. So only this router and this router, so backup and designated router have the complete LSTP, but the remaining routers, they don't have the complete, so they are not in the full state but they are in basically in two-way state. Now some related terms. So we say that routers which have exchanged these hello messages and meet all the requirements, then they are called that they are neighbors. And routers in two-way state are called neighbors. So two-way state means, for example, if we say these two routers are in two-way state, it means they have exchanged the hello messages, but they have not exchanged the complete LSDB, a link state database. But there may be some of the routers who might have exchanged the complete LSDB, then those routers are known as adjacent neighbors. So for example, if we say these two routers have complete LSDB, then we say these are adjacent neighbors are fully adjacent neighbors. And in terms of relationship, the first type of routers are known as uh, that they form neighbor relationship. And uh, these adjacent neighbors, they actually form adjacency. So these are some terms related with their relationship. So this was some overview of these designated and backup designated routers and uh, yes thank you thank you very much for your time